Hi, this is Russell Stanard from teachertrainingvideos.com. Today we're going to look at Kahoot, and what we're going to particularly look at is the recent introduction of the ability to add video and pictures into your Kahoots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a Kahoot that includes videos and pictures, and then I'm going to run it so that you can see exactly the experience that the students will have. Now in the past there's been a bit of confusion over the use of video in Kahoots, because up until a while ago you couldn't actually use a video in the questions. The difference now is that you can actually use a video in the questions. It used to run in a slightly different way. So what we're going to do is show you how you can include pictures and videos into your questions or into the activities that you do in Kahoot. And I'm going to show you both from the teacher's point of view and the student's point of view. Let's get started. And as always, if you like the video, please share it with other students. Please like it. And any questions or comments, please leave them uh, below. Let's get started. I'm not going to take you through the process of creating an account, but if you want to create an account, you need to go to kahoot.com and you can sign up for free. I've already signed up. Now, I don't use Kahoot as much as I used to because I'm doing teacher training, whereas in the past I was previously using it as a teacher. But if you click, uh, once you've logged in, if you're on the home page, you can actually create a Kahoot straight from here. I tend to click on my Kahoot so I can see a list of my Kahoots. And I click on this button here, Create. And the one that we're going to focus on today is create a new Kahoot. And straight away, you'll notice that in the question, and it's really important, it's not in the answer. The answers are still going to be the same, but in the question, you have the option of image library, upload image, or YouTube video. Now, we click on this button here, and we're going to just give this a title. So we're going to call this My Kahoot with Images and Video. And we can use that also as a description, just very quickly copy that. And we're going to leave all the rest of this uh, fine. We can deal with this a bit later. This will be automated anyway, so we get like a cover image, but you'll see that in a minute. I'm going to click on done. And so at least we've put the details in. Now we need to uh, begin to make the questions. Remember, the answers are going to be text based. So you're not going to be adding images or video into the answer options. You're adding images or video as part of the question. And the first question I'm going to ask is simply, who is this? And now I'm going to click on upload image. And I'm going to use some images here. And these images that I'm actually going to work with are images that I have used from a Creative Commons license. In other words, I went on to Google and I've used images that I know I've got permission to use. I can also um, put the reference to where I got these images from, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So I'm going to click on this one here, click on Open, and I can see that that's going to be fine. I can crop the image here as well, and it's here. If I want to add image information, and I will do that a bit later, put, put, put the link in to the source of where I got that image from, and in fact, all the image, other images also come from the same place. So that's a good idea. I'm not going to crop this picture. That's fine. I can decide how long I want this question to be on the screen for, so I'm going to choose 20 seconds. I might want to make it a little bit longer at the beginning, so let's choose 30. Write the question, who is this? And now I'm going to choose my answer. So I just simply write in my four options. Okay, so I've written in my four options. I now need to say, well, which one is the correct answer? So I'm going to click on that one there. Now, I'm going to ask another question and just a little tip. Imagine that you wanted to use that picture again in your next question. So what you can do is click on the duplicate button. So I'm going to click here. And this, I'm going to change the question now. And I'm going to say, when did he become king? So I'm changing the question. And now I'm just going to change my four options in terms of the date. So the correct answer for this is 1509. That's when he actually become king. So I'm clicking on that button there. Best to put in a question mark, always miss the question marks out. So always keep in mind that you can do that. You can duplicate a question. If you're planning on using the same image again, then obviously that's a really simple thing to do. Now let's try a video one. So we're going to add another question. And this time, again, clicking on quiz. So we're going to carry on this idea of four possible answers. But this time we're going to work with video. Now the way that YouTube works, uh, is that we can click here and add a link to a video. So I'm going to just jump over to YouTube and I'm going to work with this video here. And so what I do is I'm going to click on share. I'm going to copy that link to that video. 
But there is a particular part of the video that I'm going to use, and that's from about the 14th second, from second 14 till about second 20. And in that period of the video, he knocks over the pens. So coming back to the question here, I paste in the video, and I've got two ways of doing this, but I can just click here, and I have a write in the number, so I can write in 13, uh, and then I'm going to write in 18. Well, I can actually use these little bu bu uh, little. Uh, buttons here to to choose the moment in the video so I'm saying 13 seconds and uh, 18 seconds and uh, that is now going to allow that video that when the question comes onto the screen that video will play from that point now it's normally not automatic in other words you as the teacher need to click on the button to start the video so we've added that as a question okay and now we're going to do exactly the same as we do before we're going to ask the question and I'm, the question I'm going to ask is what does he knock over so I've written the question onto the screen now I need to add the four answers so uh, you can see there are various things on the screen the lion there the computer but the thing that he actually knocks over or it, uh, uh, in fact he knocks over other pens so I'm just going to click here and now we've answered that question now the same thing would be the case with the video and this is often the way that I'm working when I'm using video is I'm just using one video but I'm therefore taking different parts of that video and asking questions about it so I don't tend to be jumping uh, from one video to the other rather I would then click on duplicate because I'm going to use the same video again but this time I'm going to ask a different question but this time the question is going to be what does he test now a very important thing to remember is that of course you need to go back to the video and change exactly what part of the video is used so if we click I think on this button here it can bring us back and this second part of the video is in a different part of the video that I want to watch so I don't want to watch from from 13 seconds to 18 seconds this time I'm going to watch from 30 seconds let me just double check that I've got this right I think it's from 30 seconds correct to 38 seconds so I'm going to ch choose 30 seconds starts at 30 and then it's going to end at 38 seconds that should be enough time uh, here and of course the other thing that I'll need to do is come back and change this because the question is what does he test with a question mark and let me just quickly change the answer so I've just written in different answers here now I've got to tell Kahoot what the correct answer is to question four so the correct answer is there now one thing if we come up to the settings you'll notice that it would have grabbed the picture that we used in one of the questions so we now have this kind of cover image it's not that important you can crop it and play around with it if you like and you'll probably notice that you need to do that but that's really not that important in terms of the actual game that just comes up for a few seconds on the screen at the beginning so don't worry too much about that we've now produced four questions we've given it a title uh, we've made sure that obviously the questions uh, we've updated the questions because we duplicated them we can always delete a question if we want to by using that button now if we want to test any of the questions we can always just click on preview just just to test that what that particular question so if you click on preview it will test the question that you're currently on remember you can always jump back and do in any editing but once you finish the key button to press is to click on done because what's going to happen is it's going to allow you to now test your video and this is really really well done and there's a couple of new features that have been kind of introduced uh, I'm not exactly sure when but certainly now that we're in 2020 they're available and I'm going to talk you through these new features when you work with Kahoot and test it out so we've got some great options here one of them is that if we want to share this Kahoot with other people so that they can uh, access it you we you can do that you can share your Kahoot so that other teachers can also make use of them but the most important button for us is this one test the Kahoot and I want to talk you through a couple of things the great thing about this is that you've got on this side of the screen what the students are going to see so they're going to go to kahoot.it you send the students to kahoot.it they're going to find this screen you're going to have this screen here that's what you're going to see on your computer and you're the one who's going to set the game up so that the students can play so the students will be waiting for the pin to come in and i'm going to just talk a little bit about some of your settings and notice i can play with up to 50 players and i just want to talk about that as well so let's just go through some of these settings 
Okay, so I'm going to try and do my best here to really explain the options to you. The first thing that's really important to remember is that you've got up to 50 players in a basic account, and that's a lot of players because I get my students to work in groups of twos or threes. There's no point in students working on their own because it's not collaborative, they're not sharing and talking about things. The whole thing is that they're working as a group. Uh, to do these uh, kahoots so I re I don't really ever do individually I put them into groups of two or three and it only they only need one device per group of uh, per, per group it's no good at having two or three students and they've all logged in on their technologies so get the group students into groups of three or two and just one person has a device can be a computer can be a tablet or be a computer now the second thing is there's no point in using team mode because if you use team mode then you normally have to put in all the names of all the members of the group much better get the students together tell them to choose a name for their team and then what you can do is when you start the game the students can enter the, their team name it will come on the screen and they'll be able to recognize their team now there is a new feature if you don't want the students to think of their own names if you're worried that they might use an inappropriate name there is what we call a friendly nickname generator and I'm going to turn that on so you've got two options you can get the students to create their own name so that is that they simply will just create their own name as a team and then they can enter that manually or you can allow the generator to generate a name for the team. And I'm going to work this way. Both ways work fine. So we're going to choose the classic mode. I don't generally change any of the other things. So we're going to choose this one here. Don't forget, this is exactly what the teachers see. This is what the student sees. So the student needs to go to kahoot.it kahoot.it and that is how they will find this screen and they'll be waiting with their devices with their computers or with their tablets or with their computers waiting for you to generate the pin and as soon as you click on this button the pin will be generated so up comes we've clicked on the button this code comes onto the screen we're going to write two four two four four one eight press enter so we've now logged in we now spin to get our name because remember we've got this randomized generator and if I want to if I'm not happy I can choose yes I want that name or if I want to choose another one I click again it's going to generate another name okay and we're going to click okay we'll have that name inspired eagle all the other students will be logging in once everybody's logged in and it will tell you how many players you've got Remember, we can have up to 50. You click on the start button. First question is going to come onto the screen. Okay, and there it is. The first question comes up, when did Henry VIII become king? And we get four options on the screen. We see the picture of Henry VIII, and we've got these four options, and we click on the answer. We think it's triangle, so we're going to click on that. And as soon as everyone's answered or the time finishes, the results come up onto the screen. We can see we got the first question right. Now there's only one person playing this game, that's us. So if we click on the next button, then um, obviously um, we can click. We can see that uh, who, what the latest score is. So we're obviously winning this game and it will show the other students there. Remember, this is what the student sees. This is what you're projecting on the screen from your computer. Next question comes up. Same thing, question comes onto the screen, then we see the image and the four options, okay, and we're going to again click, imagine that we get this right. Now the next question is going to be interesting because it's video. So again, we see a list of how students are getting on, who's winning, we click on next. Now notice that when you bring up this next question, the video in this particular case is going to start at 30 seconds because it's what does he test, and we're going to watch the video and the students get a few minutes to watch the video and then they need to choose the correct answer they can choose the right answer at any time so jump onto that that is the correct answer okay now move on to the next question now it's a little bit funny when you bring up the next question sometimes the video is already playing sometimes you need to click on it and start to play it again you see notice this time for some reason the video is actually playing okay and you can see that he knocks over the pens and again then you've got to choose the answer now one thing i have noticed is that we can't replay the video. So let's imagine that the students are gonna click on this, but just to show you that before, I'm not sure if I click here, I think what's gonna happen is it will go back to the beginning, see? So you can't actually do that. You can only play the video through once. 
Otherwise, what you're going to have to do is find the part of the video that you want the students to watch again and then play it. So just keep that in mind. It is one of the disadvantages with the system, the way that it works with YouTube. And we get now who won. And we get some really nice things now afterwards. We see the, the results and we can get the feedback and we can get this really useful uh, report. If we click on view report, I think it comes up on the screen. It gives us a breakdown of the uh, scores and what the students' um, um, uh, final score was. And I think we can also download a kind of file here. But if you go to the home page, if I remember rightly, Let's just click out here and then, in fact, let's go to, I think it's in my cahoots. We can actually come here and get a report from here. I think I'm right. You used to be able to, maybe they've changed it slightly now. So maybe you can't get the reports in that way. Let me just check. Ah, oh, yes, sorry, you've got a separate button here and click on that and that comes to the reports and then you can download the report from here. We might be able to, even if we click on it, let's have a look. Maybe just grab the report from here. Um, I'm not sure if, Okay, so it's only giving you basic information in this report. So if you want more detailed information, I do believe, you will need to uh, download the report and that will give you more detailed information. So that gets you really started with Kahoot, go through the basics, kind of updates you to the 2020 version and um, uh, it's a technology that I still love using when I'm doing teacher training and I, I watch lots of teachers using it. Uh, it is a great technology and I do like these uh, options now that we can use video and images though as you can see from the video I've just shown you that it is slightly limited. Okay, I really hope that video was useful and if you do like it, please like it, please share it. Please, any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. Um, if you're looking for more videos on using smartphone technologies, there's a special section at the top of my website here. Just click on that and you've got lots and lots of videos that you can make use of. If you want to follow my work, the best thing to do is to sign up to the newsletter. That way you'll be updated with all the blog posts, the latest videos, the webinars I run, the online courses I run, etc. And the other thing you can do is subscribe to the YouTube channel. I think we're up to nearly 12,000 subscribers now. Don't forget if you subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, that way you'll be updated on all the latest videos. And the other thing, if you're looking for training, either you wanted me to come over to your organization and do a presentation or a workshop face-to-face, uh, -face, or if you want me to do some training online, either with a group or uh, individually, I also have a, a great virtual classroom that we can use for online delivery, and I now have quite a few people that I work with and train them online in things like Camtasia and Edmodel and Kahoot and um, Snagit, etc. Then you can also contact me and uh, see if I can help you. And thank you very much.